Hello and welcome to the online worship of St. John's Anglican Church in Ghent, Belgium for the 9th of August 2020, which is the 9th Sunday after Trinity. Fortunately, we're still in a pandemic. We still have to listen to the scientists. Science is a gift from God. So, this one, this one, and that one. If you are planning on joining us in person uh, for worship, we offer Wednesdays at 5.30, Holy Communion in English, short one, Saturdays at 4 p.m., lovely Vesper service, and on Sundays we have two services, on Tinur, Communiviering in het Nederlands, and at 11.30, Holy Communion in English. Grace, mercy, and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you and also with you. Let us confess our sins, trusting in God's mercy. God forgives you. Forgive others. Forgive yourself. Through Christ, God has put away our sin. Let us approach our God in peace. Amen. Lord God, your Son left the riches of heaven and became poor for our sake. When we prosper, save us from pride. When we are needy, save us from despair, that we may trust in you alone, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. A reading from Paul's letter to the Romans. Moses writes concerning the righteousness that comes from the law, that the person who does these things will live by them. But the righteousness that comes from faith says, Do not say in your heart who will ascend into heaven, that is, to bring Christ down, or who will descend into the abyss, that is, to bring Christ up from the dead. But what does it say? The word is near you, on your lips and in your heart, that is, the word of faith that we proclaim. Because if you confess with your lips that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For one believes with the heart and so is justified, and one confesses with the mouth and so is saved. The scripture says, 
no one who believes in him will be put put to shame, for there is no distinction between Jew and Greek. The same Lord is Lord of all and is generous to all who call on him, for everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. But how are they to call on one in whom they have not believed? And how are they to believe in one of whom they have never heard? And how are they to hear without someone to proclaim him? And how are they to proclaim him unless they are sent? As it is written, How beautiful are the feet of those who bring good news! The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Immediately after feeding the crowd with the five loaves and two fish, Jesus made the disciples get into the boat and go on ahead to the other side while he dismissed the crowds. And after he dismissed the crowds, he went up the mountain by himself to pray. When evening came, he was there alone, but by this time the boat, battered by the waves, was far from the land, for the wind was against them. And early in the morning, he came walking towards them on the lake. But when the disciples saw him walking on the lake, they were terrified, saying, It's a ghost! And they cried out in fear. But immediately Jesus spoke to them and said, Take heart, it's I, do not be afraid. Peter answered him, Lord, if it's you, command me to come to you on the water. And he said, Come. So Peter got out of the boat, started walking on the water, and came towards Jesus. But when he noticed the strong wind, he became frightened, and beginning to sink, he cried out, Lord, save me! Jesus immediately reached out his hand and caught him, saying to him, You of little faith, why did you doubt? And when they got into the boat, the wind ceased, and those in the boat worshipped him, saying, Truly, you are the Son of God. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Everyone, everyone who believes in Jesus shall be saved. At least this is what Paul claims in his letter to the Romans in verse 13. Everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. It is Jesus who saves us because of our faith in him as our saviour. 
And the Gospel reading of today is a beautiful illustration of this. Peter is not eternally lost because of his doubt, not unsaved because of his fear. No, Peter is saved when he calls on the Lord, Lord, save me. Immediately, Jesus reaches out and pulls him up out of the water. And as a witness to this, the disciples in the boat, the whole community, proclaims Jesus as Lord. Is this not what holds us together as a community, that we worship the same Jesus as Saviour? During the past half year, we have not seen too much of each other, and still, we have been united in Christ. Even when we felt alone, distant, and separated from our community, we still worship the same Jesus Christ as our Saviour, our God. This is what unites us. Jesus sends the disciples out on the lake by themselves while he goes up the mountain to pray. They are alone. And when they are alone, they see a shadow approaching over the water. What could that be? What creature has dominion over the water that they can walk on it? Surely this must be a ghost. But Jesus makes himself known. Take heart, it is I. Do not be afraid, he says. But how can they know that it is really him? Have you ever wondered in your life, is this God's doing or what is going on here? How should you know? Peter is brave enough to ask the question. Lord, if it is you, command me to come to you on the water. So Jesus says, come. And Peter goes. Far from the land, he walks on the water, in the wind. And then he notices how strong the wind is. He becomes afraid and starts to sink. Have you ever stepped out in faith, only to become afraid? Have you ever had doubt? And then at first nothing happens. Peter sinks and Jesus lets him sink. Isn't it interesting? When is it that Jesus acts and saves Peter? Only after Peter calls upon the name of the Lord. Jesus reaches out and catches him. And note, the circumstances don't change. When Jesus catches Peter, the wind is still as strong and they are in the water, far from land. It is only when they get back in the boat that the wind ceases. Christ saves. He saves us from our doubt and unbelief. In the direst circumstances, when the wind makes us afraid so that we sink, Jesus shows up when we call upon the name. And because of this, we as a community can proclaim together with the apostles that truly he is the Son of God. Amen. Let us declare our faith in God. We believe in God the Father, from whom every family in heaven and on earth is named. We believe in God the Son, who lives in our hearts through faith and fills us with his love. We believe in God the Holy Spirit, who strengthens us with power from on high. We believe in one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. God is faithful to us through all the storms of our life, yet our faith in God is so very small. Trusting in our faithful God, let us pray. Faithful God, we pray for the gift of deeper faith in you so that we trust you in a way that alters our dependence on everything else and allows us clearer vision as to the direction and role of the church. Remind us that it is your church and not ours, your work, your power, and your kingdom. We especially pray for the Greek Orthodox Church and the Archbishop of Canterbury's representative to the Archbishops of Athens and all the Greece. We all pray for the ministry team for those training for ordained ministries. Lord our God, let only your will be done. Faithful God, as we call to mind the stormy areas of our world, the raging and the insecurity, the confusion and bewilderment, the restlessness and fear, let your claiming and reassuring presence be sensed and recognized bringing peace and goodness 
righteousness, and hope. We especially pray for PCT Siemens Fisherman Service Center, Lead Pressure Mission of Thailand and Indonesia. Lord our God, let only your will be done. Faithful God, come to us in the storms of life when we let one another down, mishandle opportunities, and come to an end of our strength or patience, and bless us with the love that never let us down. We especially pray for Alan, Marianne, Jack, Eddie, Christine, Isabel, Kingsley, Hans, Pete, Jan, Jacqueline, Andre, John, and Dominic. Lord our God, let only your will be done. Faithful God, we place into your loving keep, keeping all those who have died, knowing their dependence on you and your limitless mercy. We thank you for them and their gifts to the world and ask that we may in our turn come to you across the waters of death and live in your company forever. We especially pray for the victims of the explosion in Peros and their families and for the victims of the heavy rain in South Korea. Lord our God, let only your will be done. Faithful God, whose promises stand sure forever, we thank you for your patience with us and your refusal to give up, give up on us. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you all, and also with you. In whatever language we feel most comfortable, let us pray with confidence as our Savior has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, now and forever. Amen. Sings my 
The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance to you and give you peace. Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in the peace of Christ. Thanks be to God.